Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. You know, a fine way to help children keep from getting too hungry or too tired when at school or out playing is to let them carry a supply of Horlicks malted milk tablets. Horlicks malted milk, as you know, is made from rich, full cream milk and the finest of wheat and malted barley. Well, Horlicks tablets have the same qualities which make Horlicks malted milk such a great children's food drink. Horlicks tablets are nourishing, energy-giving, easily digestible by the youthful system. They contain the precious vitamins and mineral elements which help develop healthy, sturdy bodies and strong bones and teeth. And they have a delicious flavor which children love. Horlicks malted milk tablets come in either natural or chocolate flavor. You can get one of the handy 10 cent size flasks or one of the larger sizes at your druggist. And now, let's get ready for Lum and Abner. Well, the old fellows have discovered that operating a matrimonial bureau is no small job. They have received hundreds of applications, and together with the many domestic problems that they've been asked to solve, their new business is consuming practically all of their time. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Abner has just entered Lum's house, reporting for the day's work. Listen. Well, come in, Abner. <laughs> I've got a surprise for you. Well, for the land sake, what in the world are you doing, Lum? Well, you're going to get paint all over that carpet. Oh, I'm nearly done now. He's putting on a finishing Texas shorter. Well, what is it? It's a sign for a matrimonial bureau. Step over here where you can see it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pine Ridge Matrimonial Bureau. I'm at Ed president, and <laughs> guess this other too. Yeah. Yeah, what's that Indian doing there? Indian? Yeah. That's Cupid. He's fixing to shoot a bow and arrow at that heart over there. Well, I do know. Yeah, I set up till my 9, 9 o'clock last night working on these things. Well, wait a minute here, no. You got that fellow with the bow and arrow standing on his head there. No, you're looking at it upside well, down. Well, I ain't done it. The letters is all right from over here, but he's upside down. Well, wait a minute, I guess. Well, I'll sworn to goodness. Sure he is. Well, it's too late now. Well, I believe that'll be better anyway. <laughs> There's a cupid that can hit him, uh, hit them hearts to stand on his head. Well, uh, what's the idea of having a picture of somebody shooting a bow and arrow anyway? I told you that's cupid. That's that trademark I told you I was going to figure out first. Cupid's is a sign of love. Yeah. You know, like they have on Valentine's and such as that. Well, I've never seen nothing like that on a Valentine. That looks more like a picture of some heavyweight wrestler to me. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon I did get him looking a little older than he ought to. Well, how old is he supposed to be? Well, Granny, I don't know how old Cupid is supposed to be. Just babies, though. Well, if that's a baby, I'd hate to see him when he gets full grown. That ain't no baby, Lum. Look at them muscles. He's full grown. Well, right Abner, if you're going to stand there and make fun of this sign, you can just get out till I get done. I ain't making fun of it. I'm just telling you how it looks to me. i tell you another thing, too. Well, he's got that air point now. He's going to miss that heart by about four foot. Oh, well, he ain't ready to shoot yet. He's just taking aim. He'll draw her down there straight before he shoots, I reckon. <laughs> I, I, I thought he was shooting at them birds up there in the far corner at first. <laughs> no, no, them love birds up there. See them kissing one another there? <laughs> ain't that sweet? Yeah, I reckon it's all right, but I still think they're going to get shot if they don't move or that young giant there don't take better aim at that hard one. I wish we had some electric lights to put on it. It'd be the first electric sign in Pine Ridge. Well, what in the world would we want with an electric sign? Well, hey, so old folks could eat it every night. Well, all me, Lom, everybody's in bed around here by 9 o'clock at night. But nobody see it, we did have lights on it. Yeah, but think how nice it looked. We could put a light right there in Cupid's hand. That way it looked like as if he was holding it, sort of. Well, now, Lom, now let's don't go to no expense on this thing. Abner, this is a big outfit, this matrimonial bureau is. We can't expect to run a business like this without spending some money and getting started. Yeah, but where are we going to get the money? That's what I'm talking about. All we've got so far is that free board from Sister Simpson. She ain't going to keep that up long if we don't hurry up and find her husband. Why, the money will just start rolling in here for a long time. Well, now, Lom, I'm going to take the first money that rolls in here and send for Elizabeth and Pearl. Get them back home. I'm tired of that. Well, all right. We'll leave off the electric lights, but I still say it's a good idea, though. Well, if you're just bound and determined to have a light on it, Mom, I've got a lantern over there at the place that you could hang on. Now, wouldn't that look fine? Wouldn't that look fine, a lantern hanging on a sign? Well, it'd light it up. Well, just forget about it. 
I wish I could think of something to put up there in that corner there. Fill out that blank space there, sort of. Well, put my name in there. You've got yours down here. Yeah, we've got enough reading on there. I was trying to think of some kind of a picture I could draw on it. Something representing love, matrimony. Hello, yeah. Let me see now. You, you wouldn't want to draw my picture on there, I don't reckon, would you? Your picture? Yeah. Representing love? Well, I just uh, sort of <laughs> trying to think of something to, you know, and put on there. I just happened to think of myself. I reckon it's called out sitting here and all. <laughs> Wait a minute. I know what I'll do. I'll put some wedding bells up there. And that way, I got all four corners took care of. Yeah. There's a cupid, and the wedding bells will go right up there, and the heart, and the lovebirds. <laughs> There's a work of art, you know it. I ought to have been an artist. Yeah, yeah, it would have helped them. Could have did better, all right. I reckon they'll know who drawed this. Stop me putting my name on there. Well, it might be best for you to put your name on there again, Lum. I don't want nobody thinking I've done it. No, we wouldn't want nobody... Huh? Nothing, nothing. I just put drawed by right there over my name. That'll set any arguments about the matter. Drawed by Lum Edwards, president and justice of the peace. Now, Lama, what's he going to do with it when you get it done? Why, we're going to put it up in the front of the Jotham Down store down there. We're moving our office. Moving? Yeah, this ain't no place to run a matrimonial bureau here in a house this way. Down there in that store building, there we'll have plenty of room. Yeah, Lord, we'll be lost in that place, Lom. All we need is summer to open up the letters and answer them. We've got to have a place to file all these applications for husbands and wives, though. Them shells down there will be the very thing. They will. Why, sure. Put the men that's looking for wives on one side of the store and the women that's looking for husbands on the other. Yeah. Put the blondes in on one shelf and the brunettes in another. And yeah. <laughs> the tall ones in one place and the short ones somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> Divide all up that way so that when we get an order for a husband or a wife, we can see what kind they want and go right to them. <laughs> uh, filing system, sort of. Hey, doggies, now, that ain't a bad idea, you know. <laughs> Just like selling stuff out of the store, ain't it? Why, sure. <laughs> Get an order, and instead of reaching up and getting a can of tomatoes, we'll just reach up and get a blonde for them. <laughs> you mean if somebody ordered a can of tomatoes, we'll send them a blonde? No, I just said tomatoes. I mean, it's a uh, difference between running the matrimony bureau and running the store. Oh, oh yeah, I see. I, I thought you were Wait, 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 wait Somebody there at the door. Come in. Well, howdy, Dick. Well, Dick Huddleston, come in. Howdy, howdy. How are you fellas today? Oh, just only tolerably, Dick. How's yourself? Yeah, I smell turpentine in there. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing a little painting here. See how you like our new sign, Dave? Yeah, yeah. Iron Ridge Matrimonial Bureau. Drawn by Lum Eddard, president of the... president and justice of the peace. Yeah, that's all right, huh? <laughs> uh, what's this supposed to be here, Cupid? Yeah, see there, Abner? Dick guessed it the first time. Yeah, I, I told Lum it looked more like a heavyweight wrestler. <laughs> well, he is pretty husky, all right. <laughs> Well, that's not bad, though, Lon, not yeah. bad. I figured him shooting so many errors that way, he sort of developed his muscles. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's some more mail for you fellas. Come down here store a while ago. Most of us addressed to the Heinrich Matrimonial Bureau. Yeah, well, much obliged, Dick. Thank and, you. Uh, these letters here are for you, Abner. For me? Wait a minute, you mean all them for Abner? Yeah, they're addressed to Abner Peabody. I think they're the Heinrich Matrimonial Bureau. Wait a minute, yeah. Abner, you ain't been going around telling folks you're the president of the Matrimonial Bureau or nothing like that, have you? Why, no. Well, open them up. Let's see who'd be writing you. And can't all be from Elizabeth. Oh, no, no. This ain't her handwriting at all, no. Well, go ahead and read it. Says, uh, dear Mr. Peabody, I received your picture and the description the Pine Ridge Matrimonial Bureau sent of you. I am very much interested in you and would like to correspond with you. Well, you tell me more about yourself. You remind me so much of my grandfather. <laughs> You're truly <laughs> Maxine Norton, holding Bill Oakland. Yeah, I do. Reminder of her grandfather. Well, what does she mean that she received Abner's picture and description? Well, I tell you, Dick, we, we kept getting these letters from women folks wanting us to find them a husband, and we never had no pictures of men to send out, so we sent out a bunch of pictures of Abner that he had here at the house. Well, now, listen, Lum. Now, you're liable to get Abner in some serious trouble if his wife's gone and everything. Oh, I don't think anything ever come of it. We oh, just... my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Now we did it, What's Lum. I told you. I What's told the matter? What's I the matter with you? Read that. Just read well, it. let me have it. Turn it loose. My dearest darling Abner. Oh, my. I received your picture and fell in love with you at first sight. You are the man of my dreams. Oh, 
Wait for me, darling. I will be in Pine Ridge within the next few days. Oodles of love, Hortense Oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Well, if Hortense Kelly is coming to Pine Ridge to see Abner, it's a mighty good thing that Elizabeth is out of town. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Tarpey is rummaging around in the kitchen of his home. I wonder what he's doing out there. Let's look in on the scene for just a minute. I wonder where Martha keeps that package of Horlicks. It used to be right on this shelf. Oh, this is... Oh, hey, Martha. Martha, come here a minute, will you please? What are you bellowing about? About this. Now, what's this? It's a package of malted milk. One look at the label ought to tell you that. Well, what about it? Didn't we go over this about about six months ago? Why, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, oh, I remember. You mean about Horlicks and imitations <laughs> of it. Well, I'll tell you, dear. I was in Smith Drugstore yesterday. No, no, it was the day before yesterday. <laughs> I went downtown with Jane Wilson yesterday. She was asking about you, Jim. Said that she... Now, let's skip all that just now. What was the idea of bringing this and not Horlick? Well, I saw a chance to save a few pennies. You're always talking to me about economy. Well, only last night, for instance, you said that... Why do you always have to economize on things you buy for me? Besides, you missed the whole point of that economy lecture of mine. You will remember that I said oh, to you that... let's not go all over that again. No, well, all right. Now, now look, Martha. You know that I don't like anything but Horlicks. I never have. Horlicks cost a bit more than cheap substitutes, yes. But that's because it's worth more, a good deal more. Why do you want to throw money away on a thing like this? Won't you please remember to always get Horlicks? Of course I will, dear. I'm awfully sorry I forgot this time. Honestly, I'll never do it again. I'll take that package back to Smith and exchange it for Horlicks. I'll go right now. Maybe you'd like to walk along with me. <laughs> yes, I'll go with you. Oh, oh Smith, huh? I got to have a talk with old man Smith, too. Leave him instructions never to sell you anything but Horlicks. Then I'll be protected in case you ever have another one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it looks like that cheap imitation of Harlick's caused plenty of trouble in the Tarpey family. You'll have to give Jim credit, though, for knowing what he wants. He knows that you just can't find a substitute for Harlick's. Knows that only Harlick's, the original malted milk, gives you full return for your money. Not only in its unexcelled flavor, but also in its food value. You can get Harlick's, you know, either natural or chocolate flavor at your druggist. This is Carlton Brickert. Speaking for Lum and Abner and Horling, who bid you all good night and good health.